14 minutes. That's how long it took from ripping out the SSD with Windows on it to throwing in a fresh one and slamming a gaming-focused Linux install on there and being up and running on the desktop. 14 minutes to kick Windows out the door and still be a PC gamer. This crap is getting much easier than it used to be. Three other times have I decided that as much as Windows bugs the absolute bejeebus out of me on almost a daily basis, Linux just wasn't there yet, especially for a gamer. And while it could be done, it was far more work than it was ever worth. But here comes the newest penguin-shaped hope for the PC gamer, Pop OS from System76. So, Want to know what a Linux gaming PC experience is like in 2020? Keep watching. Also, throw down a thumb, a sub, kick the bell around for a bit, and stay tuned because this is only step one in my latest Linux gaming adventures. Hello again, I am Blunty. And it's fair to say very few people are genuinely fans of Windows. And those that are fans of Windows might have some very desperate brain damage because Windows is a pain in the ass. It always has been, it always will be. Most of us merely tolerate it because it's so powerful and dominant as a de facto monopoly operating system in the marketplace. It's basically or practically impossible to avoid using it, especially if you're a PC gamer. I personally strongly prefer Mac OS X for my day-to-day -day needs and especially for photo and video editing and, and content production. They make life noticeably easier and my workflow much more seamless and fast, but Macs suck ass for gaming, so I'm still stuck with Windows one way or the other. And for literally decades now, literally decades, I have grown weary of Linux nerds, the absolute nerdiest of the computer nerds outside of actual career professional system admins, who are usually Linux nerds anyway, proclaiming that this, this is the year of Linux on the desktop. I've heard it every year for about 30 years, and it's never been true. It's never been close to true. Seriously, Google that phrase. Google, this is the year of Linux on the desktop, or phrases like that. Literally decades of people claiming that Microsoft days are numbered and Linux on the desktop is here to take over. You can game on full fat Linux on the desktop in place of Windows, even alongside of Windows if you want to jump through the complications and hoops of making a machine dual boot. And yes, I know it's not that hard, but we're talking from the perspective of your average ordinary gamer here. So while gaming on Linux can be done, it is still the realm of hobbyists. It always has been, probably always will be. And these people enjoy time spent fiddling and tweaking as much as they do playing games. And that's what it was. Endless tweaking, workarounds, command line arguments. And in the end, while some games would work perfectly fine, it was a long, long way from being attractive to a gamer who wants to actually spend their time gaming instead of trying to get the games to work. In recent years, there's been a few Linux distributions more focused on gaming, even some promising an out-of-box gamer-focused experience. SteamOS, for example, might be the best known amongst regular folk. It promised a console-level, easy-peasy gaming experience, and it, 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 it just wasn't that. It was even at one point supposed to become sort of pre-installed on a bunch of different systems from various vendors and stuff, and that never really properly happened either. So I tried SteamOS years ago, hopeful that with a company as massive as Valve behind it, it may finally be the answer to free myself from the dependency on Windows. But it was a buggy, clumsy, frustrating mess, and Valve never really pushed forward in any meaningful or proper way with it. Sure, they're still updating it, technically speaking, but the updates here and there have been fairly meaningless, and for any practical sense, SteamOS is basically dead at this point. A company called System76 has been popping into my field of view every now and again, especially over the last year or so. They have been around since 2005, doing servers and desktops and laptops, but with Linux pre-installed instead of Windows, like pretty much everyone else does. In 2007, they started transitioning their pre-install to an in-house developed Linux distribution they called Pop OS. So System76 with Pop OS, their, their focus has been on staying true to the free and open source mentality of Linux, they're not cludging it up, while crafting out a streamlined, clean workflow and productivity-focused desktop experience for their users. But they also do offer the OS just 
freely downloadable because it, it's Linux and it's free and open source. And while they don't wave it as a flagship feature and the hardware they sell is marketed towards people doing actual proper real work, they have done quite a lot to streamline the gaming experience too. So much so that Pop! OS is becoming sort of the recommended Linux uh, distro for people wanting to try out gaming on Linux. They even have two bespoke variants of the installer, one for AMD GPU-based systems, one for NVIDIA. There's a good reason for the split there, but suffice to say, NVIDIA are kind of dicks when it comes to the Linux stuff and drivers and the whole concept of Linux being free and open source. They, they don't really want to play in that garden. I mean, they keep their drivers updated, but, but they're what they call binary blobs. A secret. Without getting too low-level nerdy about it, at least in this video, inside Pop! OS are a few things that make the gaming experience on Linux as close to as seamless as it is on a Windows machine as they can possibly make it at this point. It has a built-in app store kind of thing to avoid the usual Linux dork preference of literally typing in a string of coded commands into a terminal window just to do something as simple as download and install a program. In that app store are ready-to-go versions of Steam, for example, and Steam itself not only has many games that offer Linux native versions, but Valve, as part of their Steam OS efforts, have also done a thing they call Proton. Not enabled by default, even on a Linux install, but easily turned on with a couple of clicks in the settings, it is a compatibility layer. In layman's terms, think of it as a translator. Games talk in Windows code, and Proton makes Linux understand it. There's also Wine, W-I-N-E. Go ahead and Google that. It's a dumb backronym, which I'm not even going to bother explaining. It is a program that has been crawling around Linux circles for coming up on three decades now. It also serves as a compatibility layer, sitting between Linux itself and an application actually programmed for native Windows. Once upon a time, Wine was clunky, slow, but useful, which is why it's stuck around after 27 years. And after 27 years of refinement, it is now fast enough to cope with even the super fast needs of gaming. Pop! OS also comes packaged with a thing called Lutris. It can be used to install and launch games and game launchers that aren't Steam native. For example, the Epic Games Launcher. They can also be used with Steam itself or games from GOG, Battle.net, Origin, Uplay, all that kind of stuff. Lutris is ostensibly kind of a UI for Wine, because a lot of what you used to have to do with Wine was command line stuff, and command line stuff is not user friendly. So Lutris combined with Wine and Proton on Steam and other such clever tricks, Pop! OS can and will and does run native Windows games over here in Linux. And Pop! OS itself is the smoothest, easiest install and onboarding I've ever ever had. Not just I've ever had for Linux, but it is so much faster and simpler and cleaner than any Windows install I've ever experienced. Ugh, I hate installing Windows so much. Even Mac OS, which is a relatively smooth install and you extraordinarily rarely ever need to actually scratch install Mac OS. Most users never actually will, but I have had to do it a few times from time to time and this is better. And indeed, as you may have guessed, all of the gameplay you've already been seeing in this video has all been played on a system that I set up to test Pop! OS out on. If you're wondering about the quality, visual fidelity, frame rate resolution, I'll punch in on that in a follow-up video. But just so you don't panic right now about how some of these games don't look their best possible gamishness, I did test this on my little teeny tiny smaller than a console AMD Ryzen 5 3400G system, which has an APU with a built-in Vega 11 graphics and no discrete GPU at all. So not exactly the most powerful gaming rig you'll ever find. But I did have this machine sitting spare, not doing anything rather important, and these tests I wanted to do were about which games would actually run properly, not about pure gaming performance itself. I know for a fact that this teeny tiny little machine can run games quite well on Windows, surprisingly well actually, if you want to check that out, I've got a video about it. But this was the most handy piece of hardware I'd set up ready to go, just to throw pop on, pop on, and check it out. And the news isn't fantastic, despite all the ridiculously clever stuff like Wine and Proton can do in making Windows games think they're talking to Windows, but tricking them into floating along on code made from freedom. Not everything works. Most stuff does, but not everything. Quite a few things didn't work. But to stop this video getting way too long, I'm breaking that discussion into its own video, a chapter two, if you will. But the short version of that breakdown goes like this. Gaming in Pop! OS is the easiest and best I've ever seen on Linux. On Linux. 
but I can't even come close to being free from Windows yet because it's just not good enough. I can't see that horizon from here. It's the best it's ever been on Linux, but it still doesn't touch how easy it is on Windows. I will be bringing that follow up to you next where we talk about the games in detail, what worked, what didn't work, what broke, how it broke, which way did it break, could I fix it? So please sub, bell and even keep an eye on my Twitter for part two coming along real soon and I'll show you exactly why my hopes got so high only to have the wind sucked out of my sails at the very critical moment. Linux nerds, thank you for what I assume are already in an even mix of happy you're trying, here's a useful hint kind of comments mixed in with super furious Linux Nazis who can only conceive the only reason I'm not loving Linux right now and heaping an endless pile of praise on Linux is because I'm either too dumb for Linux or I picked a distro that isn't their particular favorite distro, therefore it's the wrong one. And of course you couldn't, couldn't, I tell you what, you think Xbox and PlayStation fanboys are shitty? Well. You ain't seen a Linux neckbeard get his dander up. <laughs> I'm actually just kidding. The console dorks are way worse. At least the Linux dorks can type because, you know, they, they have to type to use their OS because it's command line and clumsy. And... Thanks for watching. I am Blunty and I will catch you next time.